So without further ado, let us begin our discussion on cell parts and function. So um, of course, you know that the cell is the small, it is the smallest living unit ever, and they are, of course, microscopic. And the discovery of this started out with Mr. Robert Hooke in the mid-1600s, wherein he used this really primitive microscope because uh, microscopes were very popular in, there was a scientific boom in that time, no? during that time in the 1600s. They, uh, a lot of the uh, would-be and wannabe scientists would have this uh, primitive style of microscope. And Robert Hooke uh, observed, actually observed the, the leaves of the plants that are surrounding his estate. And he noticed these things, not these things which he termed or he coined as cells. Why? Because they look like rows of empty boxes. They look like cells of a prison. That's what he saw. And then on the other side of uh, the UK, uh, of England, that is, we have Theodore Schwann and Matthias Schleiden, wherein through their experiments, they were able to conclude that all living things are made of cells. And about 50 years later, with Rudolf Virchow, he was able to say that all cells come from cells. He definitely disproved the idea of spontaneous generation. What is spontaneous generation, Danny? It is basically thinking that things or living things uh, come from nothing. That's spontaneous generation. Well, Rudolf, Rudolf Virchow was the one who contested that, and he finally stated that all cells come from cells. And all of these findings actually uh, are... Um, collectively the principles of cell theory. So the first principle is all living things are made of cells. Second is the smallest living unit and structure, sorry, so the smallest living unit of structure and function of all living organisms is the cell. And all cells arise from pre-existing cells, just like you and me. Where do we come from? We were not imagined by our parents, but uh, we come from our parents, both our mother and our father. And with the combination of their sex cells, we were able to be formed. All right. So we'll not talk about that anymore. So let's go to the characteristics of all cells. All cells would have a surrounding cell membrane. And all cells would have a protoplasm. In, the, in our case, it's a cytoplasm, which... Um, is basically a thick fluid wherein the contents of the cell are situated in. And then all cells would have organelles, but it depends because there are two types of cells. So you have your prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Your prokaryotes would not have these membrane-bound organelles, but eukaryotes, on the other hand, would have them, would have them. And then, of course, all cells would have a control center, which is the DNA, which is basically the genetic material of your cell. And that is the whole point of your cell, of it existing. Basically, it's for the DNA. Now, there are, again, as I've said, there are two cell types. You have your prokaryotic and your eukaryotic cell. When you say prokaryotic cell, these are the most primitive, the most rudimentary, and the most basic types of cell. If you're going to look at a bacteria or an archaea, you have, or a bacterium, that is grammatically correct, <clears throat> you would uh, see, where's my mouse? Okay, you would see this um, type of cell. It would have, in its outermost layer, it will have its capsule and then a cell wall for added protection a plasma membrane, and inside of that um, prokaryotic cell of your bacteria would be the protoplasm, and then uh, loading on the protoplasm would be the ribosomes. What are ribosomes for? Ribosomes are basically for the synthesis of proteins, okay, or protein synthesis. Now, <clears throat> ribosomes can also be found in eukaryotes, no? So these are very important because all living and where does protein come from it comes from your ribosomes and lastly you have your dna right here which is um, coiled 
and it occupies a very dense space and this dense space is actually called your nucleoid it's called a nucleoid it's not exactly a nucleus because it doesn't really have a membrane or it doesn't really have an envelope it has no protection at all it's just that this nucleoid is an area wherein your dna is most dense and then in addition to these um <clears throat> structures and components your um, prokaryotic prokaryotic cells would also have your cilia which um enables your prokaryotic cell to move and in addition it will also have a flagellum right here no which has the same purpose that is for locomotion and movement now in animals there's only one type of cell that would have this flagellum and that is your sperm cell all right so as i've said prokaryotic cells they don't have membrane bound they don't have a membrane bound nucleus they don't have a nucleus yes but they only have this region of dna concentration which is called your nucleoid and the organelles if there are any would not be bound by any membranes eukaryotic cells on the other hand are more advanced than your prokaryotic cells their nucleus is bound by a membrane and they would usually include your fungi, protists, plants, and animal cells. So we are, we human beings are part of the eukaryotic cells or our cells are eukaryotic. Now, in a eukaryotic cell, this is a representative animal cell, huh? In the eukaryotic cell, we will only talk about the following, um, the following organelles. Very important, we have your mitochondrion, which is also known as the powerhouse of the cell. The Golgi apparatus, which is known as the packaging center of the cell. The lysosome, which is responsible for uh, the digestion of some <clears throat> parts of your cell that are no longer functioning. And it can also um, target invaders or known invaders to the cell. And of course, nucleus, which houses your DNA and which is uh, being enveloped by your nuclear envelope and then naasad shy or it also has communication centers like your nuclear pore and of course your nucleus wherein your dna is situated or coils of dna are situated in you will also have this region called the nucleolus where ribosomes are found and are created okay so the nucleus there in the nucleus ribosomes are made now in a communication with the rest of the parts of the cell your nucleus will be in direct communication with your endoplasmic reticulum your rough endoplasmic reticulum and your smooth endoplasmic reticulum your rough endoplasmic reticulum is called as such because it has the presence of ribosomes so this particular and the plastic reticulum would have the ability to make proteins in one ribosomes while your smooth and the plastic reticulum does not have that instead the ser as we fondly call them would have would synthesize carbohydrates or lipids instead so basically your endoplasmic reticulum both smooth and rough are basically conveyor belts of your cell or conveyor belts within your cell. And then, of course, all of these organelles will be situated in your cytoplasm, which is basically the fluid-like structure where, again, your membrane-bound organelles are situated in. And then your microfilaments, your centrioles and microtubules contribute to the structure of your cell. So that is a representative of your animal cell. While your plant cell, on the other side, uh, on the other hand, on the other side, I'm sorry about that, on the other hand, would have the same organelles that are found in your animal cell, but there are some that are added in. So, for example, your plant cell has a cell wall, no? And cell walls of the plant would be composed of cellulose. Now, why is there a cell wall in your plant cell? Now, if you notice, your plants are situated in the outside environment. They don't really have extra protection at all. So they need to survive any kind of weather that they're situated or they are subject to. 
So in that case, they need to survive through the winds, through the harsh weather, through the heat and all that. And that is why they need additional protection aside from the cell membrane. And that is through the presence of a cell wall, which is made up of cellulose. Now, if you're going to if you're going to feel the difference between our meat and our skin versus the trees, if you're going to touch the trees, if you're going to feel the trees, it is hard and rough, right? The trunk of the trees is basically hard and rough. While us, if we're going to hold on to our skin and to our meat, we are soft and supple. No? We are sometimes we're a rough day. Okay? Kulan of lotion, but we are basically soft and supple because we don't have a cell wall. All right, so aside from a cell wall, the plant cells also have a rather large vacuole. Now, what is this vacuole for? Now, animal cells, don't get me wrong, animal cells also have vacuoles, but they are particularly smaller than that of your plant cell. Your plant cell have a larger vacuole. Why is that the case? Because they use this for storage and yeah, for storage basically. So they can actually store wastes from different processes that are being done inside the plant cell, or it can, they can also use these uh, this large vacuole as storage for water in case there's no water supply from rain or from the ground waters around and a shop. And then another, uh, another thing that is unique to your plant cell is the presence of a chloroplast. A chloroplast is basically a plasmid. This is the site of photosynthesis. Now, if you remember or if you recall, photosynthesis is basically how your plants are able to make their food, quote unquote, food. So what is this food? We're talking about sugars, no? Basically, your plant cells are not able to bulk feed from other sources because they don't have mouths, they don't have digestive system, uh, they don't have digestive systems. So what do they do? They photosynthesize. They get carbon dioxide and water, and with the with the help of your sunlight, they're able to make sugars on their own plus oxygen as a byproduct. So the intention of or the purpose of photosynthesis for that photosynthesis is really the production of your sugars so that is basically the um the unique parts of your plant cell so we'll, uh, let's go here to the plasma membrane now what's special about the membrane of our cell now our cells it is very important that nothing untoward gets into the cell and nothing will be wasted from the cell that could easily go out from the cell so basically your plasma membrane needs to be selectively permeable what does that mean it means that not everything can get into and out of the cell only things that we need can get into and out of the cell that's what it means. Now, for your plasma membrane to be selectively permeable, it is important that your plasma membrane is made up of a substance that would have a polar head and a nonpolar tail. And that is where your phospholipids will come in. Phospholipids right here. Now, your phospholipids are very unique because they would have a hydrophilic head or what we call as a polar head and a non-polar or a hydrophobic tail. So meaning it has a double filter of the things that could get into and out. Selective lang siya. So in this case, it would look like this. We're going to zoom in a little bit here, no? Okay. So as I said, this phospholipid layer is actually a bilayer, a phospholipid bilayer, meaning there are two layers of phospholipids here. As you can see here, there's this one layer right here. So you have the head that is polar and the tail that is nonpolar right here. And then on the second layer, external, you have one ang polar head and internal, see, nonpolar tail. 
So that is very significant because this actually enables your cell to become selectively permeable. So what actually goes into and out of the cell? So there are selected um, molecules, no? Like for example, water, uh, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and oxygen can get easily into and out of the cell, no problem, because they're too small to um, they're they're very small that they can actually uh, they can actually slip through the gaps between uh, these two layers of your phospholipids. Uh, water also has a unique carrier, which um, I forgot the name unique carrier to it so it can easily get into and out of the cell there are also lipid soluble substances that are selective um, not all of them can get into and out of the cell water soluble substances like sugar uh, they will need assistance to get into the cell and at the same time your ions because of their charges they cannot easily get into and out of the cell there should be um, help coming from the cell Na may tabang sa cell para makasulod siya. So those are the things that may get into and out of the cell. The cell. All right. So I'm gonna talk about the membrane proteins now. The cell walls, on the other hand, your plants are made up of the cell wall of your plants are made of cellulose, and the cell walls of your fungi are made of chitin. So if you notice, um, um, ang imong if you eat mushrooms, so if you eat fungi, labi na kanang mushrooms that can be found in chop suey kana siya. If you try to eat it, um, there is this really weird texture that you can feel sa mong fungi. It's very slippery. Mura siya plastic. It's like you're eating rubber. It's like you're eating plastic. It's like a hybrid of those. So that is actually because of the chitin that is found in the cell wall of your fungi. And then, of course, your cytoplasm, this is where your organelles are situated in. It's not only just water, but it has other, <clears throat> it has other um, solutes as well. All right. So let's go here to the nucleus. So as I've said, the nucleus is the control center of the cell. And it is called the co uh, control center of the cell because this is where your DNA is found. And in addition to that, because the DNA is found here, it will need to have extra protection. And the extra protection actually comes from the nuclear envelope uh, situated uh, or surrounding the whole nucleus. So it is membrane bound here. And then inside of the nucleus, we'll also see your <clears throat> nucleolus. No? So before that, let's go here to DNA. So you know that DNA is basically your hereditary material. So we can identify you through your DNA. What is DNA? Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. And that's shot. So it is very important because it tells you everything, all the instructions for life, all the instructions of your life what you look like, how you think, and all that. What diseases you're prone to, what uh, your talents may be. So it is very important that this part is being protected. Now again, inside of your nucleus is another region, which is your nucleolus, which is basically um, where your um, DNA, uh, not DNA, sorry, where your um, ribosomes are made. And also, this is... This also directs the synthesis of RNA. What is RNA? That is your ribonucleic acid, which is the basically the component of DNA. Uh -uh. So it is also, again, it is also the site of the production of ribosomes. And remember, ribosomes are for protein synthesis. So very important. So let's go to the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to fast forward here to this image right here. Okay, you can just read through the previous slides if you need more information. But I want you to look into how your nucleus is related to your endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, not related, but connected to your ER and to your Golgi bodies. All okay? right. So for instance, your nucleus, or sorry, uh, for instance, your brain tells you that, oi. 
cell, I need you to make this type of protein or I need you to make this type of hormone. Okay, so that signal or that information will be transported or will be sent, that signal will be sent towards this cell. And then this cell will receive that signal and then will be received by your nucleus. Now remember, in the nucleus, naakay nucleolus din ha. Then, in sa yung ipangayo, it asks for a protein, right? All right. So, uh, the nucleolus will be the one to produce that protein because the ribosomes are made here. So the, the protein, the, that protein will then go out from the nucleolus and out from the nucleus pajud, and then it will go here to the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum. So it could go through your rough ER or your smooth ER or both of them. So think of it this way. This is like a conveyor belt. Your your endoplasmic reticulum is like a conveyor belt of your factory. Okay. Let's say, for example, you ordered something from Lazada. Okay, So you ordered something from Lazada. Let's say you ordered a photo card of, of Namjoon from BTS. Okay, for example, like that. Okay, okay, Lazada, I want this. Okay, add to cart. And then that message was received by the, <clears throat> the verified store in Lazada. So this store in Lazada will then say, "Oh, this is the photo card. This is the one that um, this is the one that my customer needs." So it will exit the nucleus. The photo card will exit the nucleus. Oh, sorry about that. Now, what if this seller would like to give you a freebie? No, the seller would like you to give uh, to give you a freebie. So this photo card will then go through the rough ER or the smooth ER or again pretty such a boat to get to give you the freebie. Now this rough endoplasmic reticulum again it has ribosomes in it. So what will it add? It will add a protein. No, it can add a chain of protein to the existing protein. So, in that sense, your photo card, pwede sad siya ang imong seller, mag-add siya another photo card. All right. But what if your photo card, or sorry, your protein will need another carb or another lipid? So, that particular protein will then go through your smooth ER, which will then add, uh, add either a carbohydrate or a lipid to the existing protein. So in that case, uh, if ingon ang seller nga, uy, mas chada matingali if lahi iyang freebie. So the seller would decide, oh, I want to give her, I want to give her a light stick instead. Okay, so that is from the smooth ER. So this, these things are now ready for packaging. All right. So ready for export manisha so whatever the final product is it will go through here and then it will ride a vesicle okay so a vesicle basically is a vehicle for your product now when this product reaches your golgi apparatus then it din shama package for the last time because remember i think i said this already Danina, your golgi apparatus is like your packaging center <clears throat> All right, so, <clears throat> so what happens here is, think of it this way. If ready na ang photo card and light stick or photo card and another photo card that, is, that was sent by your verified store in Lazada, uh, he, the store will call JNT Express. Or JNT, uh, pag yung kukuha sa kanin mga package na kay ready na siya to ship, okay. So, pag about din din, think of your Golgi apparatus as your packaging center, okay? Packaging center or your JNT. So, si JNT na dayon mag <clears throat> buot sa iya ha. O saan niya pag -pack? Securely. So, pwede niya nga i-wrap niya, bubble wrap, and then place it in a box, pwede. The Golgi apparatus can do that. Or, pwede sad nga, it can also add another thing that may be lacking here. Gusto siya na pay freebie or gusto siya na apay kind of promotional material. So your Golgi apparatus can do that there. 
So the Gold apparatus will be the one to package that. And when the package is now secure, the, <clears throat> the Gold apparatus will then place the package in a secretory vesicle. And then this vesicle will then go through the cell membrane. And then whatever is inside of your secretory vesicle, it will exit from the cell. And that is basically exocytosis. So that is the whole relationship of the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, your Golgi apparatus, and your secretory vesicle. All right? So I hope you got that. If you haven't, you can just rewind it and then rewatch this part of the lecture. Kasunod lang, Azim. Oh, sige, no problem. Kumalik mo. Okay, go. That's all right. Mm -mm. I understand because you just came from the ID shoot. If wala mo nakahabol from the start, you can just watch the recording na lang dahil, which uh, the link will be sent or, or will be posted in your Google Classroom. All right, so we're done with the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi apparatus. Now let's go to lysosomes. Now, what if some of your organelles or there is an organelle within the cell that is not functioning correctly? So what if that happens? That then comes lysosomes. Basically, lysosomes contain digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes now, no? So it can actually dissolve these parts or these organelles that are no longer functioning well. So it can do that. It can aid in cell renewal. And it can also break down old cell parts that are no longer functioning correctly. And in addition, if there are invaders in the cell, it can also digest these invaders and kill them. Dracaris! Ana, ana si lysosome sa mga koanimo. Mga invaders in your cell. Now, I will not talk about the vacuole anymore because we already talked about it kaganina. And then let's go to the mitochondrion and the chloroplast, which are the bacteria-like organelles. They're called they're they're called bacteria-like organelles because they have their own DNA. They have their own DNA that is separate from the DNA that is found in your nucleus. No, so that would probably mean so since they have their own DNA, probably these organelles actually were bacteria way back then. That formed a symbiotic relationship with our cells. All right. So let's begin with the mitochondrion. The mitochondrion is very important because it is actually the powerhouse of the cell. You can say that the powerhouse of the cell. Now, why is that the case? Because this is actually the site of cellular respiration. What is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration is basically the conversion of sugar, that C6H12O6, that's the simplest sugar called glucose, converting it into ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy that is used in the cell. No, It's the kind of energy that is used in the cell without glucose there is no ATP so mo na importante jud ka ay mo ka untang tarong now nanong mana siya why is it that glucose needs to be converted back to ATP to be utilized by the cell it's because glucose is really rather large no it's large it can get into the cell yes but it's too large for the cell to utilize and that is why it needs to be converted into something smaller so importante ka ay ni si uh, mitochondrion because this ATP is actually what powers the processes that are found in the cell. Okay, the processes that the cell actually does. So without ATP, dili mag function ang imong cell correctly. It's like think of it this way: if dili ka mukawan ng tarong, then dili ka ma energize, right? Or dili mag function ng tarong imong cells, and that is basically the essence of cellular respiration in your mitochondrion. So again, mitochondrion is very important because again, it produces your ATP. 
So, chloroplasts on the other hand, no? si chloroplasts which are unique to your plants and some of your proteins and also your cyanobacteria, this is, the, this is the site of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So what is photosynthesis? It is taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, water from the roots, and then with sunlight, you can get sugars and oxygen. This is being done by the organisms that cannot bulk feed. Can, that do not have digestive systems, wala sila yung mga ba, ba, so they cannot get, uh, they cannot get food from other sources. They can only make their own food. So nana sa ka powerful, no? So they are autotrophic in nature. So this is possible through the presence of your chloroplast and um, and this sugar. Kini din siya na sugar nagiproduce sa imong plant. Uh, mo kwan pa kailangan pa din siya i-convert into ATP. So si plant da yon mag-perform din sa niya of cellular respiration and that. So photosynthesis happens here in the chloroplast and cellular respiration happens in your mitochondrion. All right. So that is basically your mitochondrion and your photosynthesis. So let us review what we have learned uh, today in the review of cell parts and function. So, of course, you have your cell wall with you, which is only um, between plant and animals. This is only found in your plants. So, this can either be made of cellulose or chitin, depending on what they are. So, cellulose is for plants and chitin is for fungi. So, plasma membrane, all of the cells would have a plasma membrane. And remember, it is made up of phospholipid bilayer, meaning it will have a polar head, and a non-polar tail, therefore, not everything can come in and out of the cell. So this enables your cell to become selectively permeable. Your flagella and your cilia are basically important in the cell motility or the movement of the cell. So in order of our discussion, Kaganina, we started with your nucleus, right? This Nucleus, which has a nuclear envelope, so basically na a membrane, houses your genetic material, which is your DNA. That, well, that is why it is now, or it is considered to be the control center of your cell. Now, inside of your nucleus will be your nucleolus, which basically um, basically synthesizes RNA or the hemoshag RNA and also ribosomes. So ribosomes, remember, this is responsible for the synthesis or the creation of proteins. And this parts, these parts are in direct communication with your endoplasmic reticulum. It could either be rough or smooth. When you say rough, it has ribosomes in it. So, can you modification and transport of proteins? Um, this is being done by both rough and uh, smooth. But the addition of carbs and lipids, this is being done by your smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, we're done with ribosomes here. Chromosomes are also in your nucleus. No? Chromosomes are basically... Kung nakay DNA, taas mo kinang DNA, no? It's a 2 meter long thread. Now, for it to fit inside your cell, it needs to be coiled and coiled and coiled. So that coiling, that coiled version of your DNA is your chromosome. All right. And then, right after your endoplasmic reticulum, we will go to the packaging center of your cell, which is your Golgi apparatus, which will package the protein for export, export, sorry, export, Expert and on export from the cell. Now, if you have a non functioning cell, um, not cell, but uh, if you have non functioning organelles, you can subject the lysosomes to those non functioning and dead uh, parts. So, this aids in cell renewal. This also attacks invaders as well. Your cytoskeleton is again, it's important in the skeleton of your cell, it, it maintains the the globular shape of the cell or it maintains the whatever shape the cell is 
And then you have your bacteria-like uh, organelles. You have your mitochondrion and chloroplast. Your mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell because this is where your cellular respiration is done. Cellular respiration, again, is the conversion of sugar to ATP. So that is sugar to ATP. Enough. Chloroplast, on the other hand, diri mahitabo ang imuhang photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis, again, is the conversion of carbon dioxide and water with sunlight that will produce sugars with oxygen as a byproduct. All right, so basically that is it for our uh, lesson on cell parts and function. We will no longer talk about the molecule movement of cells like passive active transport because um, it's not really that important for our successive topics.